All right, hello, we are back with the HFM Tech School. We are on episode three. I am Lindsay Brackett, got Josh with me as usual and always. And then we've got Gary Maluski here. He is the Corporate Facility Compliance Manager with Novant Health. And Gary is here to talk um, with us about their water management program at Novant. So. Gary, thank you for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the water management program? Well, sure. First of all, thanks, Lindsay and Josh, for inviting me to this. Uh, this is pretty exciting. So any way I can help, I'll be glad to. <clears throat> I've actually been in facility management now for about 30 years, uh, working with various facilities in my career in various positions. But pretty much um, facility management has been has been the focus over all those years. And <clears throat> with water management, it's been one of those things that it's been out there. I know and Joint Commission has had been looking at, you know, various things over time um, as far as, you know, biologicals and in dialysis and other things. And, and I think over the years, you begin to see a change in that whole process where we've actually started in 2013 at Novant in looking at the water coming into our building way back then there was also i'm sure you're aware that there was a lot of fear of legionella um, mm -hmm. there were several facilities who reported legionella and several people got sick and so we began as an organization to look at it well before there were any requirements out there actually in 2017 i think is when cms actually began to say that there needs to be some kind of water program in your building. And um, I think at that time, to be honest with you, I think people were, didn't know a lot about water management. What am I really looking at? What am I looking for? Um, you know, when you talk about Legionella, the sky is falling. People get yeah. very nervous and antsy about the whole thing. And, and what do we do? Um, you know, how do we, how, how do we combat this? Well, over time, what I think we've been getting to realize is that there's bacteria in the water. No matter what we do, no matter the chlorine levels coming into a building, um, other things that we're measuring, you have bacteria in the water. And so the, the real question becomes, how are you managing that bacteria? And while you might have a positive outcome, you begin to really then look at, well, is there a problem? Just because I have a positive outcome, is it affecting anything? And I think those become the key questions in determining or, or actually developing a successful water management program. Um, so as we began to, to move forward with this um, and over the years um, continued our data, uh, like I said, we've been monitoring since 2013. So we right. have so, you know, eight years of data that we've yeah. been able to look at. But the question is, what do we do with it? How do we manage it? And, Good and that was question. <laughs> and, and so, you know, that became the key. And over the last couple of years, uh, we went ahead, we put together a water management team to begin to look at all this data and say, okay, what do we do with it? I mean, uh, it's coming in, you know, people are concerned about Legionella, they're concerned about other things, but do we really have a problem? We don't know. And so as the team began to look at this in its kind of an infant stage, and we, uh, early on, we had, like I mentioned, we have been monitoring since 2013, we hired a company called Phygenix to assist us in doing the water sampling for us and to begin reporting all this data to us. And over the years, just as we, we've been learning, I think they've been learning as well too, as to what does all this mean and what do we do with it? And so as we've been moving along, um, we have begun to look at what we consider to be critical control points coming into our building. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but, um, mm -hmm. and then once we have these critical control, control points established, begin to look at testing at those points and determining, okay, you know, what are our chlorine levels? What are our fab levels? You know, do, well, we kind of set a standard at 0.5 coming into the building, 
you know, what is coming into the building? And, you know, we've, we have found that we've had readings from 0 0.2 to 2.5. But what does all that mean? Again, um, do we have an issue going on with it? And so we've become more educated. We've been able to look at that and then now begin to ask a key question. Has there been a waterborne illness in the facility? It related to the water coming into the building, which I think is a key point that people need to understand. You know, we do all this testing, but, and we have positives, but what does that really mean? And, and so we're at the point now that we're able to have that confidence to say, okay, just because we have a positive, we now have processes in place that we can specifically look at those positives and do some sampling in various locations to determine if we really do have a problem or if it's just one, just that it's a positive and there's no outcome associated with it. So that's kind of in a nutshell where the program is uh, right now. Okay, and I'm glad that you you talked about um, waterborne pathogens and, and Legionella because I think that's an important distinction is that we're, you know, water treatment and testing is more about equipment performance and the chemical makeup, but water management um, it's really about infection control and testing for Legionella mm -hmm. and other, other waterborne pathogens. Um, since our, our audience is mostly technicians, right, frontline staff that are actually out there um, and maybe partaking in the, the testing procedures, can you talk to us about your critical point um, approach that you've taken and what are those critical points? Sure. I, I mean, some of those critical points are the water coming into the building. If you have two or three water loops coming into your building, <clears throat> each one of those points coming into the building is monitored. Mm -hmm. uh, we then get, so you kind of got to look at it as a, as a pyramid. It's probably a good way to describe it. So your water coming into the building is kind of um, that lower point of the pyramid actually. And then you, as you're moving up, you're getting more and more specific. So now Okay, you got the water coming into the building. Now, where's that water being fed to? Well, you got hot water tanks. So that becomes another control point. You know, what is coming out of that hot water loop? Um, when the water's coming in at one point, it might be at 0.5, but then you find coming out on the back end of that, it might be 0.1. So the question is, is there a PM in place, for, or not PM, a, a, a preventive maintenance program to maybe annually you're flushing your hot water tank? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question to a lot of facility people. Are, is there really any kind of process in place to do that? And you know the answer might be, no, we're not doing that. So do we have to look at you know trying to take that particular control point and do some flushing of the hot water tank, maybe one or two times a year to then remeasure on that backside and say, okay, based on the flushing, we were able to really get out a lot of uh, buildup in the tank. And now all of a sudden we've gone from a 0.5 to where we were at 0.1 or two, we're now at 0.4. So to me, that's a significant improvement because Absolutely. we were able to identify a particular control point versus trying to redo the entire building at that point. And so you, you've got that, you've got your water coming to where you're feeding your cooling towers, your chillers, that becomes another control point that you would be looking at to make sure, you know, as part of your chemical makeup that you're doing to treat those things, you know, what are the chlorine levels and things coming into there too, so that again, you're reducing those, those bacteria levels um, along with your chemical mix that you're doing. And, and, and you made a good distinction because that is where the water treatment takes place versus the water management, if you want to call it, uh, mm -hmm. of your program where you're looking at those various things coming into the building. Yeah. And then you begin to establish other critical control points. Um, maybe you have a fountain in, in the mm -hmm. facility. That becomes a critical control point, the water coming to the fountain. And you know, with the spray coming off, that's always a great location for Legionella to, to develop because of the mist and everything. And, and it, you know, it's one of those nightmares that, that the facility guys look at as, as they kind of doing their testing or looking at in the building. And so 
that becomes another point. You know, how is that being managed? Um, how are you taking your samples there to see what actually is the output of the fountain to determine if you got any problems going on there? Or do you have adequate chlorine coming out of the fountain as well too? So now you begin to kind of see what are those critical control points? And they could vary from facility to facility based on the, the various things that you got going on in there. And then um, the next piece would be is then measuring, you know, we do sampling at the patient um, level to where we take samples from the various, various rooms just to see what kind of chlorine levels we're getting at the patient room. So now we get, so that's your next point. So you kind of begin to see how that pyramid begins to, to develop and you're able to better isolate an event if you do have an event versus again, worrying about the sky is falling because mm -hmm. we got something coming into the building. Now you're able to better define where that process is and how, how to, to kind of look at that process um, much closer. Sure. I know that, that definitely makes sense. Uh, having a more focused approach and not um, just attacking the whole building and trying to figure out where your, your critical point is or where you might have that uh, point of entry with your waterborne illness. It, it also keeps it to where it's more of a um, environmental program versus a yeah. clinical program. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, based on what we've been able to do, if in fact, then we do have a breakout, right of some type, that's where the clinical aspect of this would really then come into play to where you would get your infection prevention folks coming in to look at the, the particular event of what they, we have found uh, based on the testing and then have them do their own investigation. And it mm -hmm. could be, it comes back that it is totally non-related to the building. Right. But if it is related to the building, now they're able to provide a much more focused approach to looking at that particular segment of the building to do some additional flushing or whatever it might be. So I, I think that we don't want to overcomplicate it. And when I mean overcomplicate it, I mean by making this a clinical program to where you're trying to evaluate every aspect of a positive finding that you have coming in, you'll never be perfect. Water is not perfect. And so if you understand that and you're able to manage that, then I think from a risk assessment perspective, you can do some true analysis to determine whether I really have a problem or mm -hmm. I have a stable system and yes, there's gonna be positive, but we're moving on and we, we continue to look at it. That's a great point, yeah. Um... In other words, uh, you guys are doing something that, that I, I really like uh, where you're involving your environmental services staff in flushing. And I think I've seen that, you know, at other facilities um, where the facilities department tries to take on all aspects of the water management plan. And it's, it's difficult because we we're all time starved, right? So yes. uh, can you talk just a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, we found very early on that if we didn't have environmental services staff involvement, the program would not be successful. Um, they, we've got them to where they're now when they're doing room cleaning discharges, they're actually turning the faucets on and letting them run to continue to circulate that water. So we're actually reducing potential bacteria buildup in, in the faucets because they are doing this, this constant running. We've also implemented what we call a water Wednesday to where on a weekly basis, it's automatic that all the systems are getting flushed. That may not necessarily be Wednesday, but at least once a week, we're making sure that the systems are being flushed. And so again, it's another step in reducing the potential for a bacteria buildup. Um, and where this really becomes key also is that there's a four foot section between the mixing valves and in, in the faucets and to where the water comes out of the faucet. And for the most part, patients really are not and they're right away sticking their hands under that. They're turning the faucet on, they're letting it run a little bit, get that water going. So again, they're, they're helping in the water management program, but they don't know it. But, but the point being is that, you know, there's been some talk about first draw versus letting it run for a minute to really get a sense of, of what the chlorine levels are in your system. 
And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, we're at that point, and even with some of these automatic flushes, working with the with the environmental staff that while there might be an automatic flush in the patient room specifically we have them flushing turning on the sink in the bathrooms which are not automatic and the showers and so we're flushing that loop and so if we can get them to one or two times do that automatic flush on the on the faucet that four foot section then is getting a pretty good flush to determine mm -hmm. what's really coming out of it so it's been key to have the environmental staff really participating in this um, because it then takes a lot of the burden off of facility people trying to go around and hit every single faucet, every single right. way. It's impossible for them oh, to yeah. do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you have eight years of data and you've got right. this water Wednesdays, your critical control points. So you've been doing this for a while and you've got a good rhythm going. So what does future state look like? Well, actually, we're at a point now, we've kind of plateaued, and okay. we're looking at the water management program kind of as a process improvement. Uh, we're continually improving. We're, we're focusing in on various pieces. Uh, we were looking at different segments, like we talked earlier about the hot water tank. Well, we're actually doing a process improvement in one facility right now to see if there's a difference with doing flushing of the hot water tank to see how we can improve chlorine levels coming out of the hot water tank. So we're able to kind of focus in on those things. But now we're at a point to say, okay, just because we have a 0.2 reading or less than a 0.5, have we seen any waterborne illness related to the water coming into the building? Uh, so now we're at a point to start beginning to logically say, can we reduce our standard from 0.5, maybe down to 0 0.2, 0 0.3? Mm. Begin to look at those things to say, Logically, we've got the data to support what we're doing. Um, we're still compliant because we're managing the system. Um, when the Joint Commission comes out with their standards in January, um, I feel very confident that we're meeting or exceeding what they're looking at. Um, you know, they don't really look at culturing. We do culturing. So again, we're able to further detail what we're seeing coming out of those faucets. So I feel we're progressing along to a point of now being able to actually reduce the amount of testing, which is a cost savings to the organization. Yeah. It's a, it's a savings to the facility people not having to do so much going around and doing certain things. So it's a win-win for everybody. So that's kind of where we're at today and what our future looks like. That's awesome. That's very cool. Very cool. But, but um, one of the keys too is, is a strong team. You've got to have a water management mm -hmm. team with the right mix of people who understand what you're trying to achieve and understand if it's, it's more of a environmental program that you're running with a clinical support. If in fact you end up having some type of outbreak, then the facility people don't have a clue what to do with that. So that's where you rely then on your infection prevention people to be able to come in and do their thing to where then they would recommend if anything needs to be different in the program. So that's the balance between between the, the two groups. And But it's key that both of them sit on the committee. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, Thanks. great. Well, Gary, thank you so much for taking the time today to, to review your program um, and uh, for, all, for all you're doing to better healthcare, really appreciate it. Um, Lindsay, anything else? This is this is great, Gary. Thank you for great. like like Josh said. Thank you for sharing your approach with us. And I I know that whoever is watching at least took away one or two helpful tips, and we appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you guys having me. You all have a good day. You too. Thanks. Thank you. you. Too. Bye bye.